Hey, Matt. Hey, what's up? Oh, hey, Penny just updated her status. Penny is disgusted and intrigued by her latest creation. We gotta ask. Yeah. Chill, bud. Get me Penny. Hey, guys. Hey, Penny. What's got you so disgusted? Well, I was hungry and in a hurry, so I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could just drink my lunch? What did you put in that glass? I mixed tuna sandwich, some mushroom, and milk in a blender. Uh, Ugh. Wait, why are you intrigued? I kind of like it. But there are other foods you can put in a glass. Like what? Like a fruit or vegetable mixture. Or milk and yogurt. That's just a start. Whatever. Today on Taste Buds, we're going with foods that flow. I'm going to check out a juice bar. Now it's blending time. To make some awesome high octane smoothies. And then we're going to hang out with some kids. I'm going to a goat farm. <laughs> Good job. Try some goat milk and some goat milking. Then join us in the kitchen where Matt's going to teach us to taste two totally different soups. Yeah. Oh, cool. In one bowl. Stay with us to get the high and the low. On foods that flow. All right, let's look for some foods that flow. I'm sure that we can find something as good, if not better, than your puree tuna fish sandwich, Penny. Yeah, we'll check in on you later. Thanks, Lily. Let me know what you find. Hey, Chillbot, get me Avery, please. Hey, Lily, I'm here to give me a squeeze with my friend Amanda, and we're making foods that flow. What do you think? We've been practicing that for an hour. It shows. Hey, hi, Lily. Amanda says there are lots of fruits and vegetables we can use to make great drinkable food. Awesome. Keep me up to date. So where do we start? Avery, you should know this by now. Right. Yeah. What do we do now? We're going to make an orange pineapple mint smoothie. Nice. So why don't you take a handful of frozen pineapple and put okay. it into the blender? Oh, a little bit more. So why do you use frozen pineapple? Well, the frozen pineapple will make the drink nice and cold and refreshing, and it'll also give it a nice smoothie texture. Cool. Now take a couple of mint leaves, put them in. Mmm, minty fresh. And last but not least, some fresh squeezed orange juice. I guess most people don't have one of these in their kitchen, so you could use orange juice from the store. Put the lid on. Blenders can hurt. Get them grown up. This looks so good. Our orange pineapple mint smoothie. Now we're gonna make a smoothie with my favorite ingredients. Start off with two handfuls of pear. Okay. And these are gonna make it colder and thicker because they're frozen. That's right, that smoothie texture. Pears, my first favorite ingredient. And then two pieces of banana. How come only two pieces? I love bananas. We only use two pieces of banana because it's a very strong flavor, and you don't want it to overpower the rest of the flavors in the smoothie. Hmm. Now, to some strawberries. So you're going to take two handfuls of strawberries. Oh, you cut these already. And another big handful. Perfect. And we're going to top it off with some orange juice. Orange juice. That'll give it extra vitamin C. All right, now it's blending time. Right. 
Looks delicious. See how thick and smoothie it looks? Mm-hmm. The gimme a squeeze smoothie is made mostly with vegetables. I wonder how that's gonna taste. Let's do it. Cucumber. These can hurt. Get a grown up. Ginger. Lime. Dandelion. Dandelion. Wow, I guess you can make juice out of anything. Kale. Celery. And parsley. With some apple. So what's next? Well, we're gonna put our finishing touches by adding a big handful of pineapple and a big handful of pear. Can I add the mix? Go ahead. Right. Perfect. And now we're gonna blend it. That is really green. All right, it's all finished. It's so green. I bet Penny would love this. So is it ready to taste? Definitely. Yes. Cheers. Wow, all the smoothies are really good. I really like the fruit and vegetable mixture. Hey Avery, how are you liking foods that flow? <laughs> hey Lily, it's pretty awesome. Matt and I are making some juice without using any blenders or mixers. I cut this grapefruit in half and squeeze into the glass, just like that. Ooh. I can even add some orange to make it sweeter. Well, save me, Sam. Well, thanks, Amanda. It's been great. Thanks for coming out, Avery. I hope to see you soon. Mmm, colorful and delicious. So why not make your own smoothie? All the ingredients you need are right here. And if you don't have a blender or a juicer, just grab an orange or a grapefruit and squeeze it into a glass. Fresh and delicious. Status update. Avery is a smoothie operator. I'd like some of that. To the blender. Juice did time. Get it? I'm about to visit some goats. Tyler. Hey, Taste Buddy. Hey, Lily. How goes the search for food that flows? Not bad. I'm almost at the river's edge goat dairy farm. Funny you should mention that. I just found out that some people who have trouble drinking cow milk might be able to drink goat milk. Really? Hey, would I kid you? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Get it? Because a kid's a baby goat. Hi, I'm Lily. Hi, Lily. Welcome to River's Edge Goat Dairy. I'm Philip. This is Gordon and Clara. And I'm Katie. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So I want to know all about goat farming. Could you show me? For sure. Come on this way. <laughs> <laughs> so, why did you decide to raise goats? I think one of the biggest reasons is that goats are just such family-friendly animals. They're a lot of fun. As you can see, they're fun to snuggle with. They're good friends. So Gordon and Clara, they can both take part in the farm. And you've got to be out here twice a day, every day, whether it's raining, snowing. And these guys, Christmas morning, we've got to come out and milk our goats before they get to open their presents. So it's fun, but it's work too. That's right, that's right. So how is goat's milk different from cow's milk? Well, goat's milk is naturally homogenized in that the fat particles are very small in it and it doesn't separate out. It's more easily digested. There's less lactose in it and it's a different form of lactose. So a lot of people that are lactose intolerant or have protein allergies to cow's milk, they can drink goat milk. Does it taste different? Not fresh goat milk. When it's taken fresh and pasteurized fresh, it's very similar to cow's milk. <laughs> Who's this? This is Pippa. And Pippa is actually Clara's goat. And Pippa is so friendly, she actually goes up the stairs right in and will crawl into bed with Clara. Oh. 
So she's just like a dog. She is a lot like a dog. And Pippa is about a year old now, and she's almost ready to start milking herself. <laughs> Come on, girls! Goats grow up fast. These two kids are only half an hour old. Within a year, they'll be ready to milk. <laughs> the whole family helps out with the milk. <laughs> this way, this way, buddy. All right, good job. First thing we need to do is wash their udders. So you just wipe their teats off because we want to make sure there's no bacteria or manure or anything on there. You notice they kind of feel like water balloon, right? It's all the milk, it's all the milk in there. There we go. They're all done. All right. You just basically you stick them on the teeth. Put it through like that, and it just kind of sticks on, right? Yeah. OK. Good job. All right, so these goats can go home. So, Lily, the milk from the goats comes into this room through the pipeline and it comes into this bulk tank, which is basically a big refrigerated tank. It's a cooler that keeps the milk very cold until the milk truck comes to pick it up. Whoa, can we drink it now? Not yet. First, it needs to be pasteurized. What's pasteurized? Pasteurized means that we heat the milk up to kill the pathogenic bacteria. What's pathogenic bacteria? Those are the bad bacteria that can make you really, really sick. Oh, so pasteurization is a good thing. It's a very good thing, yes. Cool. Can I try milking a goat by hand? You sure can. So show me how to milk a goat. All right. First, you just put your forefinger and thumb around there, and then with your rest of the hand, squeeze. Can I try? Like that? Yeah. Uh, so how much milk does a goat put out in a day? About three liters. Really? Yeah. Whoa. I don't think I could drink all that milk. <laughs> But I think I saw somebody who could help me. What's her name? Socks. Oh, she's so cute. She really likes this milk. So Socks, how do you like foods that flow? A toast to my first time trying goat's milk. <laughs> hmm. So it's like a little bit saltier than cow's milk and a lot creamier too. Very good taste buds. It's exactly how it should taste. <laughs> this is called chevre. It's a soft, fresh cheese, so it means it's not aged at all. So it's very nice. creamy. The kids love it with strawberry jam. And then we have our feta cheese. So this is a salad-type cheese. It's delicious with tomatoes and on salad. Whoa, it's salty. It is. This is Clara's favorite. <laughs> I had a great time playing with goats and learning all about goat's milk. Thanks for the tour. You're welcome. Come anytime. Back anytime. Thanks. That was awesome. Man, I'm really popular with the taste buddies today. Hey, Lily. Hey, Jasmine. I heard you're making soup later on, and I found this hilarious fact. What? Did you know, hundreds of years ago, in France, the ladies in the king's court had only soup and nothing else. Guess why? Tell me. Because I thought chewing would give them wrinkles. <laughs> no way. Yeah, can you imagine us doing that? You could do like this. Wow. Yeah, or like this. <laughs> <laughs> if only they had us back then. <laughs> totally. Oh, I gotta go, but I'll catch you later for the big soup show. Till then, let's just blow. <laughs> That's the right page in the book. Is that amazing? You don't even have to see it. Guys, I had the best time learning about goats. And I have a surprise for later. Well, are you ready to witness culinary magic? Two soups, one bowl. Avery, pick a soup, any soup. I'm making Avery's fire engine red tomato soup. Nice. Lily? I'm going to be making Lily's green zucchini spectacular. Aha. Red tomato, green zucchini. Can two contrasting colors coexist in one bowl? We'll find out.
right after this. Let's get started. Okay, start off, I'm gonna add some butter to the pot. Stoves are hot, get a grown up. I'm gonna add some olive oil. Nice. Now you both are gonna need onion, so why don't you toss that in there. In goes the onion. Nice and fresh. And nothing goes better with onion than garlic. Why don't you get that in there? Graters are sharp. Get a grown up. Now, the cool thing about garlic is that way back in Egyptian times, garlic was so sought after and highly prized that it was used like money. Oh, so it must make our soup very rich. <laughs> nice for them. <laughs> All right. All right. Next, some S and P. Salt and pepper. Sweetness and patience. <laughs> so for the base of my soup, I'm gonna add some zucchini. A beautiful zucchini. And the zucchini is gonna help make the soup a little bit more liquidy because it's 95% water. 95% water. 95% water. Now, it looks like you got some olive oil, garlic, onion in there. Very Italian. Si, sí, senor. That's Spanish. Well, how do you say it in Italian, then? Si, sí, signore. It's very close. Right. Well, I'm going to put some carrots in. These are going to be nice and sweet, very orange. And they're good for your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and put in some roasted red peppers in, Woo. too. Make a bit of a smoky flavor. Nice, I love roasted red peppers. Throw them on a barbecue, flame them up, peel off the outside. Mmm. And some tomato paste. Really intense tomato flavor. Intense color, too. And a bay leaf. Hey, why am I putting this in anyway? It's gonna add a subtle floral taste to your soup. But remember to take the leaf out. Yeah, you don't want a whole mouthful of leaf. And a little bit of oregano. Yeah, go for it. Hey, how do you say go for it in Italian? Um, Lily, how's it going over here? I'm gonna add my potatoes. It's gonna help thicken my soup. And then I'm gonna add some green peas. Oh, they're my favorite. These are gonna add the green and a tiny bit of sweetness. And then I'm gonna add some chicken broth. Whoa. This is what makes it a soup. I'm gonna add my chicken broth, too. Ooh. Oh, they're both smelling so great already. I'm also gonna add some plum tomatoes. <laughs> Tap them in. Yeah. <laughs> Those are gonna be the base of my soup. And I'm gonna add some lentils. Nice. I'm gonna thicken it up a bit. I'm gonna get puffy and absorb all the liquids. All right. Now it's time to turn up the heat and let these vegetables mix and mingle together. You know, get to know each other, have conversations, socialize. Hey, speaking of socializing, I should go up there with the Taste Buddies. They're really going to want to see how you combine the two soups into one bowl. Yep, how Matt works his magic. Mmm, it's like a warm simmer breeze. Hey, Avery, what's the rule about the bay leaf? Don't leave it in. Exactly. All right, and now it's time to mix it up. Yeah, but my soup's not that green. You know, I thought you might say that, and that's why I have some basil and some spinach for you to add in for color. All right, some spinach. And basil. Ooh, you can really smell it. Fresh basil. Hmm. I think it's kind of tangy. All right, well, maybe you should add some uh, brown sugar. That should hey. sweeten it up. Yeah, that should do it. All right. Nice. All right, grab your blenders. Now remember, there's some basic rules to blending. Once the blenders go in, they stay in. You don't want a hot mess everywhere, okay? Blenders can hurt. Get a grown up. Ready, set, blend! Tastes 
hypnotizing. All right, Woo. that was awesome. <laughs> okay, now ladle some into your measuring glass. All right, now it's really nice and green. Nice, nice. Slowly but surely. Mm. And I think that should be about. Yeah, that's good. And now it's time for the pour. Okay. Whoa! Oh, Where did go, man? It's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> all right. Now all that's left is a little bit of Parmesan for decoration and taste. Thanks, Matt. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. 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 Clearly, yours is amazing. Avery, yours is just so tangy, and it's just delicious. Two soups in the same bowl. Matt, I don't want to eat soup any other way. I knew you'd like it. So what's the big surprise? You've been drinking goat's milk. Goat's milk? No way! Hmm. It's good. Oh, I can't wait to try that. That's so cool. We should totally hang out. I have some pureed sandwich and mushroom left. Anyone? It's kind of weird at first, but once you get used to the taste, wow! Oh! No. Penny, stop drinking that. These soups looked and tasted amazing, so why not make your own? All the ingredients you need are right here. Status update. The taste buds are... Going with the flow. <laughs> I love fruits that flow. And look, no wrinkles. <laughs> Super 